Ritter Communications presents the NEA Varsity Podcast, brought to you by TubeTown and NEA Sports. Here are your hosts, Marcus Carlton and Ryan Fletcher. Hey, hey, everybody. Marcus Carlton, Ryan Fletcher back with you on yet another episode of the NEA Varsity Podcast, episode six, I believe, if if uh, I'm remembering correctly. Ryan, how's it going, man? Uh, going well, Marcus. How are you? I'm good, man. We had our off week last week, and we've all we've got our batteries recharged uh, physically and on the hardware both, and so we're ready to go for the second half of our season. Well, sa- same scenario. We had a, a week off uh, uh, the week before last. Uh, come back for two more games. I had a game this Friday. Have a, uh, uh, another game. I had a game last Friday. Excuse me. Have another one this Friday, and then we'll get a week off, and then we'll be set and ready for the uh, you know the 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 rest of the remainder of the season, and hopefully even picking up a a playoff game or two along the way, depending on what some of our area schools can do. Yeah, it's it's you know it's hard for me to believe that Tubetown is we're exactly halfway through our schedule for this year. We had twelve games on the schedule, including the games we do over in Tennessee, and we're we're right exactly to the halfway point. So that's just I mean, you know, we we hear it every year, man. Once football starts, the the accelerator goes to the floor, and and it's gone before you realize it. Well, you know, it's just it, it's part of the fun of uh, being right in the middle of all the action and that sort of thing. And it does fly by really fast, uh, especially when you're enjoying what you do. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's where we're at where we're at now in the in the, in, in the middle of a conference uh, play. Uh, we uh, last Friday night had uh, Valley View at Paragool. Uh that was our that was our game that we covered, and it's the first time we've covered either team this season. Valley View obviously off to a great start, best in school history. It's hard to be better than undefeated, and three and zero took on Paragool, who was zero and three, and really expected to go down there and just see a, a absolute blowout. And it was quite the opposite. As a matter of fact. Paragool controlled uh, uh, the ball, and uh, for the majority of uh, the football game, especially in the first half, Valley View was limited to three possessions in the first half, and uh, Paragool had the ball for uh, at one uh, at one span for uh, what seemed like almost an entire quarter, uh, from about the six minute mark all the way to uh, close to that same uh, mark in the second half, and uh, they just uh, they run that uh, that 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 double wing offense, and uh, they didn't turn the ball over and converted on two different fourth down plays. Uh, they came, Paragol came into that game with only one pass completion in the entire year for the first three games, and uh, then kind of uh, threw a wrinkle at Valley View, and uh, they they completed two passes in the. In uh, that that half, as a matter of fact, completed three in the half, and two happened to come down on fourth down conversion. So uh, that really extended uh, uh, their time in having the ball. Unfortunately for Paragool, they never they got at one point got inside the ten yard line and were stopped on downs, and they just could never put it in the end zone. Uh, and that has also has a lot to do with a, uh, a probably the best defense around in the Valley View Blazers. Uh, who are only, I believe, averaging, uh, giving up seven or less points per ball game. So we really got to see that Blazer defense. They, you know, Valley View also came out uh, flat. Uh, and, and 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 I and again I say, you know, when when your coaches are prepping you to uh, stop the run all week because they run that double wing. Uh, and then they come out and and do something they haven't done in three games, and that's complete some passes on you. I think that threw Valley View for a loop for a little bit, but the Blazers got on the board uh, for the very, very end of the first half. Uh, still kind of a slow process, and then finally the Blazers broke through about midway through the fourth quarter and put two more scores on the board. Uh, still, in my opinion, question marks in regard to the Blazer offense. Uh, saw some good things out of quarterback Zach Grayson. And then saw some things that uh, inexperience really played as a factor. Uh, He's got a strong arm, but sometimes he doesn't always utilize it. But i tell you one thing that he does have, Marcus. He's got two of the best receivers uh, 
around in Connor Watson and uh, Travis Graff. And Graff's a kid that, you know, he's all sun or best under the sun in football, basketball, baseball. And he's a guy that I watched play in his sophomore year uh, that that I, I knew could be a really special football player. Uh, and I and I still think that uh, he was injured last year and limited to only playing on one side of the ball, and that was defensively where he led the team with seven interceptions. He's got great hands, and and he showed off the other night, had some big plays. But uh, key to them for Valley View is just getting it to those guys and letting them kind of work their magic. I, I think they're uh, still got some question marks at the running back position. I don't think they've really settled in on one guy. Uh, but Valley View comes out on top 21 to nothing. They beat Paragool. They go to 4-0, and and uh, they're really rolling right now. I know that uh, Putin's has them ranked 11th in, uh, 11th in the state. I don't know how accurate that is, uh, but that's, that's where they've got them right now. And in my opinion, they are, the, uh, the aside from win, the in the 5A East. So, uh, Paragool, on the other hand, uh, you know, there's your, I, I said this in the broadcast and I'll say it uh, again, uh, coach Michael Slows, he's one of the, one of the best guys around. And, you know, if he were coaching in another place, you know, his, his, uh, uh career record would be quite different because I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, but, but you talk about a guy that I felt like that maybe was about to turn the corner last year with his team. And then he lost his uh, quarterback and his running back. So, in my opinion, that running back, David uh, Williams, was one of the best, if not the best, in the conference. And both transferred to play at different. So, you know, it's just another uphill battle for Paragool. But got to watch them both play. Uh, love love covering games at Paragool. And a uh, big shout-out also to their, their the state uh, championship band that they always have. That's like being at a, at a college atmosphere. So we had a good time down there. Uh, we'll have Valley View and Paragool later in the year on our schedule. I think week eight we host uh, or we cover Valley View at Nettleton. And then uh, the final game of our season is the battle for the bell when Paragool travels to, across town to Greene County Tech. So I know, I believe you were off, as you said, Marcus, but you have a game coming up uh, this week. Yeah, we were off, but the Warriors were not. Uh, Westside uh, made the trip up to Highland, and, you know, there were a couple different reasons why we didn't make that trip. One was logistics among our crew. And as you know, and, and for those of you who may not know, the majority of our production crew, which is a total of about seven or eight people, uh, five of those seven to eight people have other day jobs. And so when they work their day job and they don't get off work till 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, and Westside was out at Highland, uh, that kind of creates a problem <laughs> because yeah. that's, that's not a drive that you can necessarily speed on to make up lost time for leaving late. So, uh, not a whole big trailer. That's true. exactly, exactly. And, and you, you know, there's, there's some areas of that that it never fails. You know, on that stretch of 412 there, you're going to get behind a semi and there's nowhere to pass because it's hills and curves and you just have to wait on the third lane passing lane to pop up and it never right. pops up when you need it to when you're in a hurry. So we just, that and then there were some signal issues uh, in the area as well. Uh, I know I tried to kind of keep an eye on the game through the uh, Highland uh, High School stream, and you know you, you could go in and you could watch their stream for a little bit, and then they were experiencing some signal issues as well. So that was another reason that we chose to to bypass that game. And uh, but Westside comes out on top, twenty to thirteen. Uh, not quite what some people expected, but I'll be honest with you, it's exactly what I expected because it it, it seems like no matter what what team has the superior talent in this uh, series, it always seems like the game is a lot closer than than what, what you think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, Westside, you know, they, they run the ball control offense, and, I mean, they had control of the game, but it was just Highland was always within reach, and I think it came down, uh, it was 20-13. to 13, Westside had the ball on, it was either a third and short or a fourth and short, uh, and if they convert, they can run out the clock. If not, Highland's going to get the ball back and have a chance to go down and go for the tie or the win. Uh, Westside hands the ball off. I believe it was to Tyler Ray, and he needed about a yard, and he got about four. So they were able to go to you know what most coaches call the best formation in football after that, run the clock out, and 
get yeah. out get out of town with a uh, a twenty to thirteen win and get back and uh, get ready for Pocahontas uh, trip up to Randolph County and to Schoonover Stadium this week. Uh, another first for Tube Town. We've never been to Pocahontas for uh, football, well for any sport, honestly. Uh, and we're making our first trip to Schoonover Stadium. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's pretty close to my hometown area. So I look forward to seeing a lot of people that I grew up with and you know realizing how old we are all are now and and all that good stuff uh but uh i i don't know what to expect out of this game now because pocahontas had a bit of a head scratcher last week when they lost to brooklyn and, and right. brooklyn dominated that game brooklyn was up uh 21 yeah. nothing i believe at halftime uh and, and pocahontas made a bit of a comeback but brooklyn ended up winning i think 34 20 was the final uh so brooklyn never really lost control of that game and you know I, I was talking to some friends from brooklyn and from pocahontas both and they both said the same thing that what brooklyn does well plays to a weakness on pocahontas which is going to be you know the linebacking core and and secondary and the way brooklyn runs their offense it just you know it was just uh they they hit them where they weren't, you know, is, is basically what you try to do. And uh, it worked out well for Brooklyn. And Pocahontas turned the ball over a little bit, too. I know there was at least one pick six in that game that Brooklyn got early on that kind of helped set the tone. But, you know, yeah. I, I think that game is just another example of why most coaches hate homecoming and all the distractions that come along with it because it was homecoming at Pocahontas. And so, you know, you could make a case for saying that a lot of the players may not have had 100% focus on the right. opponent at hand because, you know, normally you schedule someone for homecoming that you think you're going to handle. And, you know, I've been on both sides of that equation on the basketball side, and to me there's nothing sweeter than going in and ruining somebody's homecoming just like what Brooklyn did. Uh, so it, that was an interesting one to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, like I said, I've got I've got uh, friends and family on both sides of that one, so I had several text messages coming in to kind of keep me posted. But, you know, now coming up on this one, uh, I I don't know what to expect. I know that, you know, Pocahontas is uh, – their, their their offense can score quickly. They, they have quick strike. They've got quick players, a lot of good team speed. But then on the opposite side of that, you know, Westside goes with the ball control. So it, for Pocahontas to, you know, stay in this game and have an opportunity to win, they are almost going to have to score on every possession that they get because Westside is going to do their best to limit the number of possessions that Pocahontas can get. Well, yeah, and and I'll say this. Uh, I think Brooklyn is a lot better than they've been before. Uh, they've got some guys, some senior leaders this year that uh, they are really hungry. They want to be. They want to be successful. And one thing that Brooklyn has not struggled to do this year is score. They've scored right at. Le- uh, uh, in three of in in three of their four ball games, they scored thirty or more points. Uh, the one loss that you know that I kind of questioned was going to Tech and losing uh, twenty nine to fourteen. Of course, everybody's entitled, I guess, to a bad game. It's just going to happen, and that may be the scenario for Pocahontas. I don't know, but I also think, and I know Pocahontas had injuries last year, but they had a pretty bad season a year ago. So yeah, you very know, out of the norm for them. You know it. it, it it was, and I just I wonder, you know, I, I I'm kind of like you. I don't know what team Pocahontas truly has because you had a lot of people talking. You know, they're picked to finish second in their conference and that sort of thing in a conference that is is uh, with about five teams that uh, have all in the last two or three four years have been right up at the very top. And uh, you know, I don't know. I just uh, that that's gonna that may be a loss for Pocahontas that really comes back to bite them. And and who knows? Like I said, I think Brooklyn's better. Who knows? Maybe Brooklyn uh, right. makes a shot at at, at, at finishing it and, and at least garnering a playoff spot, but maybe finishing second, third, or fourth. Yeah. Well, and and when I was speaking earlier about Pocahontas's defense and what Brooklyn's offense does, I said linebackers and secondary. I meant linebackers and D line because Pocahontas had a lot of trouble covering the middle of the field in that game, uh, and that and that played right into Brooklyn's hands. And, and I think that could be an advantage for Westside too with their running game because of how they like to use Tyler Ray and Logan McPherson. Both both just straight up the middle, especially right. Tyler Ray. You know, McPherson, they'll try to get him to the outside a little bit, but uh, Tyler Ray is just – he's that bulldozer that can yeah. go straight up the middle that'll get – you know, when you think the play is going to go for two or three, he's going to get five or six. And that's and that's just his style, and I think that can play to West Side's advantage. Um, I'll be interested to see, 
you know, the the matchup between West Side's defense and Pocahontas' offense because, I, you know, they're, Pocahontas has some really good skill players at quarterback and wide receiver both uh, that I think could cause some problems for West Side. You know, I, I mean, I could see this being, you know, if – if West Side scores quickly, like say they expose that middle of the field issue that Pocahontas had towards Brooklyn and they score on long runs of, you know, let's say 30, 30 yards plus and you get into basically a shootout, I think that favors Pocahontas simply because yeah. of the, you know, the way their offense is geared. Uh, I don't know that West Side's offense is geared toward a shootout type of game. They're more of a ball control, lean on you, lean on you, lean on you, and then when you get fatigued, they pop one for 20 or 25 yards on you. And right. just like what we saw them do against Piggott early in the year. Uh, Pocahontas is more of a quick strike offense with you know uh, dump passes and a little bit of running game. And, you know, of course, their, their quarterback, we, we all know about their quarterback. He's got a great arm. Uh, and, and he's going to throw the ball around the field. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, which style wins out. Is it going to be the quick strike offense of Pocahontas, or is it going to be ball control from West Side? Uh, and, and and honestly, right now, I'd have to flip a coin because I don't know which way it's going to go because uh, both teams have shown some inconsistency so far that you don't really – you don't know which team's going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I, I think it – it makes for an interesting uh, contest, certainly one that I'll be keeping up with or watching you guys just because, uh, uh, like you say, you know, Westside uh, has, has had some issues this year uh, with some with some teams and with injury, and I want to I want to see how they respond against uh, a team that's supposed to be one of the best in 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 their conference and right. the same token. I want to watch Boca Honest. I want to see yeah. uh, what, what what team they're going to bring to the field on Friday night. Well, and, and when you come off of a, you know, I, I've seen this in, in uh, throughout any high school sport. When you come off of a bad loss and a game that you were honestly you were supposed to win, and you lose that game, it can go one of two ways. They yeah. can come out and one loss can become two, or they can come out and be you know ultra laser focused. And, sure. you know, take out their frustrations from that bad loss on their next opponent. So, I mean, yeah. and, and it could go either way. You know, I I don't know, you know, maybe a little bit of why the Westside Highland game was as close as it was, was because uh, Westside may have possibly been looking past Highland to this to this uh, showdown with Pocahontas. Well, that's certainly a possibility. I mean, it's. I, I think we're in for an interesting game. I just don't know if it'll be a 14 to 6 type game or, you know, a 35-28 type game I, I think it could go either way and uh, I, I do I think it'll be close uh, and we'll have major ramifications for that conference oh absolutely I mean it from this point out man the rest of the games for West Side uh, major conference implications because you've got Pocahontas this week then you've got Brooklyn uh, and then you know they get Cave City for homecoming uh, and then they go to Rivercrest and then they finish up at home with Truman and Gosnell in back to back weeks yeah. So pretty much yeah. every game left on the schedule, if you're wanting to, you know, compete for the conference title or even possibly host a playoff game, you've really got to take care of business here on, on what I'm calling the second half of the season. Yeah, no doubt about that. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see. Ryan, where are you guys at this week? We are at Jonesboro. That's where, where our first game was, and we're making a our midseason return to there. Uh, one, to the second of three games that we'll have with the Golden Hurricane. Uh, they host uh, Jacksonville this week. It is their homecoming. Uh, I'm not going to lie when I say that I don't think the distraction of homecoming will be any <laughs> issue on the because Jacksonville just simply they're just not very good. Yeah, they're just they're uh, struggling. Yeah, they they, they do, and uh, they uh, I believe are 0 and 4 on the year this year. Uh, their one chance uh, correction. They're one and three. They beat Little Rock Hall, which is always a uh, a uh, coin toss between those two teams but um come in one and three they're just they're just not very good and and it's a good opportunity you know this is one of those games where jonesboro can come in and maybe try some different things out get some guys in that that maybe need to 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 get some different reps at whatever position uh and i I don't want to say jonesboro just can't show up but you know they uh you know they 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 play half as good as what they're capable of. This won't be a ball game. Uh, 
I'll say this, Jonesboro, now they're three and one. They're one loss coming to uh, Conway, and what they played Conway very close is the 14 to seven final. Uh, that being said, uh, they, Jonesboro has, they beat Batesville, who's not, in my opinion, I think that, you know, they're, they're not a bad team. Uh, still not the old Batesville that they used to be. Um, uh, and then they, uh, picked up a win over Mountain Home. They struggled a little bit in that football game with them and then certainly struggled in that home opener we had, uh, at the very beginning of the season. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Little Rock Christian? They, was it, was it that, that was it. Yeah. yeah. And that was uh, being quite the game. A uh, little, uh, Little Rock Catholic. 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 Yes. Oh. Catholic. Sorry. Uh, but with that being said, uh, you know, it's a good opportunity for them to come in and pick up a win uh, and just see some guys kind of show out and uh, do what they do. So uh, uh, looking forward to being back at Jonesboro and seeing those guys, see how different they look from that very that very first week when we covered them and when they struggled pretty mightily, especially offensively. Yeah, it's you know, this is one of those games for Jonesboro that you want to go out and you want to set the bar pretty early and – you know, use the second half of this game, like you said, to get some guys some reps, uh, either from second team, third team, or maybe try moving some guys around in some different positions to prepare them for down the road when they get ready to make a run to the playoffs and possibly in the playoffs. Because this is one of those games, even though it's, it could be a blowout, you know, there's a lot of learning opportunities there with as, you know, Putting some of these guys in who've not been under the bright lights, so to speak, give them a chance to get out there and perform, you know, when it's game time and not just in practice. That way, if you need them down the road, they're going to be ready. Well, Randy Coleman likes to do that. He likes to get multiple guys in when he can. He's got a a roster of nearly uh, 90 kids. So, you know, that's insane. It is. (laughs) And it shows how how much the kids want to come out and play for him and his program and the success that they've had um so you know and and we're talking about a a group of 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 nine almost 90 where i look at where i covered a mark tree team earlier this year that really had enough to put on the field so you know it's it is what it is and uh uh i I look forward to that and looking and watching some of those kids play um and, and, and maybe seeing a little bit of the future of what uh, uh, is in store for uh, sure. Hurricane football. So that's where we're at Friday night, Marcus, and uh, looking forward to that as always. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i be surprised if you guys see more than maybe a quarter and a half or, or two full quarters of Deshaun Stewart. Uh, you know, I, I would get him out there and, you know, get some reps in early. And then if, if things go as expected and Jonesboro takes control, if if I'm the coach, you know, which I'm not, but I'm just saying that I would not risk getting him, you know, putting him out there any more than I have to in a, in a game like this because you're definitely going to need a beast like him down the road. Well, and I, if I, if I'm his uh, future college coach, I might just <laughs> go, like, hey, take care of business, and right. get him out of there. Yeah, please. yeah. So it'll be it'll be another interesting Friday night. You know, there's a lot of good games going on in the area. Um, we've got we've got two of them, and you know, I'm talking with a uh, one of my friends from Pocahontas uh, last night. I just asked him. I was like, "All right, what do you expect this Friday?" He's and and it kind of goes in line with with part of what I was saying. He's like, "I expect a shootout." He said he expects po- uh, Pocahontas to. Uh, to struggle a little bit stopping the running game of West Side. Uh yeah. he he he's a Pocahontas guy, but he predicted a West Side victory. So, you know, me having my West Side roots that I have, I'm I'm not gonna argue with him. I'm like, all right, man, I'll take it. You know, if it's by one or by seventy, I don't care. I'll take the W. That's all you needed to hear, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That that's absolutely right. That's all I needed to hear. So well, all right, man. This is uh it's kind of been a short edition, but with with uh Tube Town coming off of the off week of of our broadcast uh we didn't you know i wasn't quite as long-winded today as i normally am but uh we'll have we'll be back full strength next week when we both got games to recap and games to look forward to so ryan enjoyed it as always man absolutely marcus all right well that's uh gonna put a wrap on this episode of nea varsity podcast and you know just a reminder if you're looking for the podcast you can find it uh apple podcast google play store stitcher 
uh, Spotify, all of the major podcast outlets. We're out there. Just search for NEA Varsity and it'll pop up. Hit the little subscribe button and you never miss a new episode when it comes out. And on that note, we'll say goodbye for this week. For Ryan Fletcher, I'm Marcus Carlton, and you've been listening to the NEA Varsity Podcast. Thanks for listening to the NEA Varsity Podcast, a production of Ritter Communications, brought to you by Tube Town and NEA Sports. Be sure you're subscribed to the NEA Varsity Podcast to get the latest episodes. Tube Town is a community partnership of Ritter Communications.